Hi, in this video we visit Yellowdo Studio in Mumbai to conduct acoustical tests for various parameters. Yellowdo Studios is an up and coming space in Mumbai started by Postwork Studio, a production house. They plan to use this studio for shooting product videos, music videos, podcasts and hosting events such as open mics and poetry jams. Our task is to ensure that the studio is free from external noise so that they can record podcasts in peace. We also want to ensure that the speech is crisp and clear for the events they plan to host. To ensure that, we are going to conduct a simple background noise test and a reverberation time test. This video is important because we are going to show you one of the most inexpensive ways of conducting these tests. This is the equipment you will need. A laptop capable of running Room EQ Wizard and Audacity an omnidirectional microphone, a sound level calibrator, a sound card and a loudspeaker. To test the background sound levels, you will need Room EQ Wizard. The link is provided in the description for you to download it. Don't worry, it is a free tool. Once you start Room EQ Wizard, go to Preferences and select the driver for your sound card. I will select ASIO here and the driver for my sound card which is Audient Evo 4. Then you need to select the input and output channels that you have connected to the sound card. If you have a calibration file for your microphone, you can add that file for frequency compensation in the preference tab. Go to Cal files, search for your driver and select the file. Since I'm using Dayton EMM6 microphone, they provide a calibration file for each specific microphone. Once the file is input, you can move on to the next step. When you open SPL meter, the value that you will see is not correct. You will need to calibrate the system first. Click on calibrate and you will see this dialog box where you can select the calibration signal. From here, select the use an external signal option from the drop down menu. Here, REW is assuming that an external signal is being played and that you know this level. Turn on the phantom power and adjust the gain to ensure that the omnidirectional microphone is receiving the signal. Place the sound level calibrator on the mic properly and turn it on by sliding it to the 94 dB at 1 kHz knob. This is the external signal and you also know the sound level of that signal which is 94 dB. Write that value in the dialog box in Room EQ Wizard and click finished. Now the calibration is complete and it is time to perform the actual measurements. In Room EQ Wizard, press the record button on the SPL meter and it will begin recording the sound level. You can choose if you want to measure the current SPL or the LEQ and also the weighting for the measurement. I will choose Z weighting for this measurement. You can also measure the frequency response of this background noise by clicking on the RTA tool in Room EQ Wizard. When you press record, Room EQ Wizard will record the peak sound level along with the current levels. You can now see that we are measuring the frequency response and the Z weighted equivalent sound pressure level simultaneously. Once you are satisfied with the measurement, you can stop the measurement by pressing the record button again. You can note down the last measurement in the SPL meter tool and save the frequency response in the RTA tool. You can see the comparison of all the saved measurements from the RTA tool in this way. To measure the reverberation time, you need to download Audacity with Aurora plugins enabled. I will provide the link for the same in the description below. The Aurora plugins are developed by Professor Angelo Farina and he has kept it free to use. When you start Audacity, you will need to select the audio driver for the measurement. I will choose the audience driver and the respective inputs and outputs. Once that is done, you will need to generate a sine sweep signal for conducting the test. You can do that by clicking on the generate tab and then clicking on the Aurora sine sweep generator. You can play around with the tool to modify the signal parameters and then click generate. It will generate the sine sweep and an inverse sweep that you will require later. Solo the sign sweep so that no other file is played during the test. Once that is done, place the microphone in a suitable position. Now you are ready to measure. Press R on the keyboard to begin recording. It will play the sign sweep through your speaker and the microphone will capture it to be recorded in Audacity. To conduct the test for any space, it is necessary to have measurements at multiple positions that you can later average out. 
Keep changing the microphone position and repeat the measurement several times. After you have completed the measurements, it is time to calculate the acoustical parameters. To do that, select the recorded signal and the inverse sine sweep and then go to the tools. You will find the Aurora Convolver tool. Once you open it, you need to drag the inverse sweep to the filters section and the audio track to the audio track section. Click on continue and then on calculate in the next dialog box that opens. This gives an impulse response track. This is basically a loud clap that has all the frequencies. From that track, remove the unnecessary parts, select the track and in the analyze bar, click on Aurora acoustical parameters. Press calculate to get the results. Aurora plugin calculates a host of data from the impulse response, which you can click on to see like RT30, RT20 or EDT and much more. You can also copy this data to the clipboard, open a spreadsheet tool like MS Excel and paste the data there for further analysis and calculations. After the tests, we think we can apply some absorption on the ceiling to reduce the reverberation time a bit. What do you think? We will create another video to show the acoustical treatment and the result comparison. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon to be notified when we release that video.